What's going on guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Turbo John. We're working on the race car. Let me show you what we got going on. Got some good racing happening this weekend. Been working on this thing a little bit already. Let me show you what we got to do. We just come back from Summer Duck. Got the wind down there. The whole car, man, it run good. We had some luck on our side. Car run good. It was pretty fast. But race car life, right? I didn't change anything. I've been reviewing the data log stuff and there are some things we need to change. I think to make it better. So let me show you what we're gonna to do today. Let me show you what we got to do on our punch list that we gotta get done this week. Check it out guys, comment, like, and subscribe. All right guys, you can see we already got the valve covers off this thing, so you always gotta go through valves. That's just general maintenance. So going through the rocker arms, pretty easy stuff. Pull the valve covers off of it, and then we'll go through there. This blue oil, this is not the SML oil yet, uh, this is Lucas. Uh, it's blue, and like the a lot of the other ones are green, but this one's blue. So Steve Morris, when he comes out with his oil, I'm going to end up getting some of that and trying it as well. So going to go through the rocker arms. We're going to check the spring pressure. Let me show you how to do that real fast. Let me show you. We're going to adjust the valves, and we're also going to check our spring pressures. So this is a handy dandy little tool. Uh, got this one off of Amazon. I think it's a knockoff of one of the better ones. And yeah, it definitely is not a, a, a name brand one. And it leaks a little bit, uh, which I did not know. But uh, there's a, a fitting down in there, right where that ending is down there. It has a little hex and that's how you adjust, you put fluid in it. So I just put jack fluid in it. But basically what we're gonna do is a two part system here. So first we're gonna go in order to adjust the valves. And I just go down the line so this is cold lash, uh, steel heads, I'm um, sorry, steel block, aluminum heads, uh, cam specs from PAL machines on this camshaft says we want about 17 thousandths clearance. Uh, when it's hot, we're gonna gain about six. So somewhere about 10 thousandths, 10 to 12 cold is what we wanna be on the cold. And so I go ahead and set these and I'm running through the valves here. This is my 10 thousandths filler gauge, you can use 12. I'm actually gonna tighten them up just a tad because when it gets hot, I haven't run them when it's hot, uh, so it may be going a little bit more than that. So we're gonna shrink this up to 10 and then we're gonna go through there. Now to adjust the valves, this is how you adjust them on every engine. Uh, when you want to adjust, I usually just go down the line so I don't mess them up. These TND rockers are amazing. They're easy to adjust, they're easy to get to. But essentially you wanna make sure that this thing, when you're adjusting this rocker arm, that this one is the exhaust. Let me show you. All right, Chase, bump it over. When the exhaust just starts to open, go ahead, bump it. That's when you adjust the intake. Go ahead, bump it. Bump it. Bump. Bump. Okay, see how that started to open? So now this is the one that we have flash, and I can feel push rod spins back there in the back, and it does have just a little bit of play. So we're gonna grab our 10 thousandths here and try to go under it. And we're looking for big changes. See how that goes right up under. It's actually tight. Okay, well I must have adjusted my 10 last time. I thought for some reason I thought we did 12. So we might tighten that up and let's go, let's go to 8,000. So we're gonna adjust these. Actually, let me just show you how to do it. I am gonna tighten it up because I'm gonna go to eight. So when the exhaust rocker starts going down, that's when you adjust the intake side. Now we want to adjust uh, the exhaust. So we adjust the exhaust when the intake goes down and starts coming back up. Bump it, bump it, bump it. Okay, real fast. Okay, now it's coming back up. So now the exhaust, there you go. So the exhaust, and that one actually is loose. That's what we're doing here. So this is how you adjust the rockers. And I just go down the line. And that's the easiest way for me to do it. So now I'm gonna put my tool on here. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go through and we're gonna check all the valve springs. And uh, basically this tool just goes on. It goes behind the rocker. This thing is set to where uh, it's uh, on the tip. Oh, shoot. Just dropped in the phone. So this thing is set, so you just put it down here at the end. That's right where you wanna do. And basically you just peel this thing back, pull it. Pull it, pull it, pull it, and you'll feel it when it goes off the seat. 280, 290 pounds of seat pressure. It's off the seat right there. So it's 280. No, 290. 
to 80 to 290. And basically you just go through all of them. There's a lot, a lot of people that run a lot more spring pressure than that. But when we set this cam up, Daniel, the, the, the lobes, the ramp is very, very uh, non-aggressive is I think, I think they call them soft ramps or something. But Daniel uh, cam, uh, Daniel with PAL cams, uh, awesome camshaft. So uh, we don't need that much spring pressure. And right now we're running, we've run 42 pounds of boost. And I mean, we're not seeing any signs of valve float or anything, which we don't turn the motor super hard. I mean, we're 8,000 RPM or so. So that's how you do it. So we're gonna run through all these, adjust the lash and then check when I get it where I want it, where it's on checking the lash, I set that, then I pull this out and check this. All right, so there you go. That's not too bad. It took just a little bit of time. I still have not got me a bump button up here. I had Chase out here bumping it for me, uh, which works out pretty good. Uh, something I did find out also, my little tool, if you offset this thing, either way, it changes the pressure. So you gotta make sure it's kind of in the center. Uh, but all of them check out between 280 and 300. And it also makes a difference on how far out this thing is, the pivot point. I've got mine touch right here on this edge. If you make it shorter back here, then you don't have as much leverage and it'll give you a higher reading. So that's the way I did it. I assume that's what you're supposed to do, put it right there. But that's what it was supposed to be, 280, 300 pounds on the seat. I think 300 is what they're supposed to be. So we've got a couple of them there are just a little bit off. But remember, when we put these heads together, you can't get you can't get the installed height the exact same on every single one. I mean, the thinnest shim you have is a 15,000 shim. So, I mean, that's as close as you can get it. So uh, I think we're good there. So the valves are good, something we've done. The other night that I found that I had an issue, after the last pass, I noted a sh noticed the shifter was very loose and wobbly. And so I was like, what in the world is happening? And so the way I've done this, it's going to be, let's see if you can see it with the shifter on. I didn't even think about recording it. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Boy, them welds look terrible. Basically, I've got a piece of angle iron that is welded right to the edge of that cage. And it's got the stub outs right here where, where these two nuts go or these two bolts. And that's how that is on there and I only had it tacked. I didn't have it welded the whole way. So I cleaned all that off, re-welded it, re-welded the tacks and then I went ahead and run a bead completely on it. It's probably not the best option. Honestly, probably what I should have done is I probably should have went ahead and moved it over about a about an inch. Well, that would've got it closer to my parachute though. So it is what it is, so it's okay. So uh, we gotta do that. Uh, we've also got to take this, uh, the the diaper material, this pig diaper out of it because it's a little loose on the front. And what happens when that gets in the flywheel, you can see it, it just goes everywhere. And so we've got to reattach that, clean it, and then you'll be good there. Next thing we got to do, if you notice the car was topping out the spring, the shock in the back really fast. I'm gonna show y'all, let me show you the data log real quick on that. Here is the shock data. So shock data, the front is the yellow and the back shock is the purple and the drive shaft rpm is the, the blue line here and so you notice how when it's right through here the shock is not fully extended uh there's a few little bumps in the in the track here we're picking up but once the shock goes fully extended then obviously the suspension is not working as good and so this is this is bad uh, so, I mean, on a super smooth track, it's probably okay for for this to happen. But, uh, you know, if the track's got any bumps or anything on it, then that's, you know, that's an issue. But my, 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 my rear shot looks like a boost curve almost. It's crazy. And if you look, 1.44 inches, and then remember, 7 inches of, of stroke, essentially. So, 6.8 is where my mine tops out right here on the sensor. So that is very interesting. And in the run, I mean, that is happening at like, I mean, it's way down track. It's a little bit before half track, at like 2.4 seconds or something. So I think that's why I'm gonna take it. I think that's why I'm gonna take the, take some leverage out of it and see what happens. 
All right, so you can see in the data log how it quickly topped out the back. And when, when this thing is fully topped out at 6.8 inches, and it's like this, you don't have any suspension. The only suspension you got is the tire. So if the car, if the track's got any bumps at all, then it's going to make it very difficult to go across it. So I think what I'm going to do, so if at this anti-squat percentage where we got it, where this top bar is, um, we have, I can't remember what the numbers are. But you see we're down, can you see it? Uh, you can't even see it but the, we're in the the third hole from the bottom on the on the uh, top bar here and so the top bar is that it's pretty steep angle the bottom bar is pretty flat and so i think i'm gonna move it up one hole on the body and that's going to take a little bit of anti-squat out of it because right now if i'm at the point the way this shot graph is doing it, it kind of looks like a boost curve it comes up and then it gradually pops up like this and you know i, I don't guess that's a problem as long as it's you know working but generally, like on Randy's, his pops out real top, uh, real fast. And I mean, but the car feels really smooth. But what I want it to do, I don't want it to top out. So right now, the mechanical leverage, the, the, the leverage that it has in the instant center, when it starts to separate, when it starts separating with the top short bar, you get more anti-squat and that helps plant the tire and it also helps pick it up. Um, now I've got four-way adjustable shocks. I can play with those some as well. But really what I think I need to do is take some of the, the leverage out of it by moving that top bar up one hole. And I think what will happen when I move it up one hole, it's going to make it so the same stiffness on the shock. It should separate about the same, maybe a tad slower, but instead of going out there and popping up and topping out real fast, maybe it won't top out at all, or maybe it'll go up and then kind of level off before it gets topped out. Because Rico is pretty smooth. That's where we're going to end up going is Rico. I hadn't told y'all about that yet. We're going to go to Rico on Sunday. They got King of Rico. It's pretty smooth, but it's an older track too. So the first 330 feet, they have ground it. But the, the backside of the track is uh, they have not ground it yet. So it's not perfectly smooth. And that's okay. And so, uh, but we got to be able to get across it without chirping the tires. So that's where we're going to be. Now, Galat is also running on Saturday. They have uh, like a hundred dollar entry and a uh, two thousand dollars on top. So Galat is top near top tier facility. It'll be butter smooth out there. So we potentially may take it Saturday as well. Just make a couple passes with it just to see how the back is separating because it may be one of those things. If I move it up a hole, then it may not work at all. It may uh, not have enough advantage to separate, and we don't want that to happen either. So, and man, these things are, these things are finicky. You know how it is. It's finicky, finicky, finicky. But that's what we're doing now. We're working on the tow pig out there now too. Need to change the oil on that. So going to change the oil on that. And I think that is all we got to do on my to-do list. Uh, car is, man, I'm super, super stoked. Super excited. We got the win this past weekend. That's two weekends in a row. We won it at Thunder Valley and we won it at Summer Duck. So this weekend we're going for number three. It's been a long time since I've won three in a row, but the car was feeling good. I was feeling good in the car. I was having really good lights. Uh, reaction times were on point. Uh, my best reaction time was against Jamie. He had me all worked up. Anytime I'm racing my buddies, it seems like I get on the wheel a little bit more, try to do better. Maybe I need to have that mentality against everybody, but I almost went red uh, and I did not guess. I mean, I let go of the button as fast as I could. And it went 002 uh, on on the green side. If you're ever a 002 though, that when you're doing a a, a trans brake with no delay box, that's pretty close to a red light. So I, I, somebody said I did a bad job at red lighting, but all the rest of them were in the 20s and 30s, um, 020, 030, 040 range, uh, pretty much all weekend. So that is very raceable. Uh, 020, 010, 015, 025. That, in my opinion, is probably one of the better reaction times. So uh, very happy, very excited about that. Appreciate everybody that come out to help. Appreciate everybody watching the old videos. We're having a blast, man. It's a good time. Well, we'll see you this weekend. Uh, Rico, for sure, on Sunday. If you're close, come down to Rico, hang out with us. Uh, it's going to be fun. King of Rico. We're going to be racing some big tire cars, too, so I don't know how it's going to work out. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. See you.